choose to move to Siberia. Nobody wants them anywhere else. What makes them think we want them here? Out of way of rest of world. Best place for them if you ask me. Of course we can understand Russian. We are Russian. Well, I never. The revolution still has much yet to achieve. Which is why you must believe that dedicating ourselves to the cause Sophia, wait until you reach our age And see how much things will have changed Though scarcely even on the map This place is being made a paradise Good luck with that I beg your pardon? Oh, nothing, just passing through Girl, of all things, keep an eye on the kids We've just arrived home after so long Look on the map, we've our new home to find We've, we've almost, almost come, come home, home after so long Hour after hour became day after day As we travel for weeks on the cross-country train Joining our journey from the west to the east As we slept in our sleep Thousands of sleepers passed on A new life, planting seeds and sowing grain. The conditions were poor in our previous life. The rubbish and will be an end to our strife. We want to contemplate a land within our mother Russia. To plant the oppression, sowing, sowing seeds of hope for us and far beyond. No more will we submit to being less than equal citizens. No more will we allow. Come to be the vision. Shalom aleichem. Shalom aleichem. As you know, Comrade Stalin, in an ingenious solution to Jewish problem, has decided that autonomous region of Birbijam is to be USSR's prosperous and progressive Yiddish homeland. Sophia, translate. For your mother. To pursue your Yiddish cultural heritage within a socialist framework, the Jews are to receive a modest but promising land. By right ours to master for our language and culture, the Jews of Russia now will be members of the Soviet family. A league, a team, a camaraderie of nations conjoined in unity. This new land, I guarantee, to be from exploitation and oppression, freed. Yiddish will be the mother tongue, a lingua franca for the world yet to come. A fresh new start, a chance for us to prove ourselves. Welcome to the Soviet Zion. What an adventure! I've never been this far. It isn't romantic, but it's nice to be here with you, so far from home, on the other side of the world. And here, we finally are in what you believe will become heaven on earth. As you 
working hard you must eat now now we all knew it would be hard work so no surprises there and yes of course it's tough we're in siberia but remember why we came here you don't remember the pogroms not so long ago mama tata baba zeda have i found a match for you young lady mama make her go away a nice pretty girl from the city so refined and cultured i know a young man oh what a fine young man what a match for you Oh, yes, he is. The son of a butcher. One of the early settlers. A real fine young girl. Father, All please. Jewish girls need a match. That's what a matchmaker is for. But this match is Bashert. It's a match made in heaven. Bashert. Destined. What's destined, miss, is that my daughter is a very talented and intelligent young girl who will marry whomever she chooses, as and when it may please her. And I'm sure her groom will not be the yokel son of a butcher. Well, we'll see. Indeed. Indeed. This soup, it's delicious. Thank you. Good evening, fellow citizens, on the 29th of March, 1939. My name is Sophia Lieberman, and I have been chosen to be the voice of Barabajan on the new radio station, reaching the most remote corners of our great Siberian wilderness. I would like to thank the authorities for asking me to fulfill this important public role on account of my aptitude translating for the new arrivals the welcoming speeches of the delegation which have come to greet us. I will read the news first in Russian and again in Yiddish. The town square, in which pole-mounted loudspeakers relay Zafir's broadcast, a fact that Morel is eager to share with passers-by. That's Sophia! Our daughter! Our daughter! I would knock us! Such a bright girl, your Sophia. You must be very proud. She's incredibly well-spoken, isn't she, our little Sophia? And long-winded. For that, I think she has you to thank. <laughs> Quiet, you! In other news, despite the heroic resistance of the anti-fascist masses, the Spanish capital city has fallen to General Franco's nationalist army of thugs and mercenaries. Such beautiful words Well, not beautiful words But anything from her lips Would be beautiful Especially a kiss affairs minister has already promised extra shipments of weapons to help crush Franco's brutal reactionaries. Once again, we shine forth as the beacon of anti-fascist resistance in a world still in shock over the Nazi invasion that only two weeks ago spelled the end of Czechoslovakia as a sovereign nation. And that ends this evening's news bulletin. I'm Zofia Lieberman, and you've been listening to the Barabajan News Hour. Tune in next time for more. I will, and every night in my dreams. I had an uncle who used to live there. Uh, uncle Jacob, yes, he was a clockmaker. Once he threw a clock out the window. He did? Yes. Uh, 
He wanted to see time fly. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, I had an uncle who made shoes, though business wasn't good. He would chase people away. He would? Yes, when they'd walk in, he'd say, shoe. Oh, <laughs> very good, Mel. You got me that time. I really did have an uncle who was a shoemaker, though. In fact, Isa, I had two of them, one on each side. One of them, Uncle Doodle, actually moved to Berlin. Berlin, can you imagine? Last I heard, he said it's very nice. Mm. Here. Why not put a sign pointing there too? And once Jerusalem... I mean, it's only appropriate if you consider where we are. Good idea. I had a cousin who went to New York. Um, you never met Herschel, I don't think. Or did you? Did you meet Herschel? No, 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 not Herschel. Sorry. I mean Avram. Yes, cousin Avram. He played the clarinet. Hey, enough I, already. Make with the story. He, he said in a letter that the place was crawling with Jews. He can't move for them, he says. He sometimes plays four simchas in a day. Oh, he's so many. And in New York, they even have talking pictures in Yiddish every night of the week. Well, perhaps we should put a sign pointing there too. Yes, all right. <laughs> and one pointing back home. No. Perhaps not. No regrets, remember? We promised. You know, we should have tossed a coin. I always dreamed of going to America. More important than a dream is to work hard. The most important thing in life is to survive. This does not come easy, not least of all for you know who's be grateful though as we are still alive. This place is an alternative to Zion This place so far away from Palestine If we work our socks off There'll be food upon our plates tonight Complacency will lead to discontentment it won't taste quite as good as their pastrami. Maybe next year if we try again. Iser, don't make fun. For several fail harvests, we've been patient with our crops. Our friends have all returned back to whence they came. <laughs> Honestly, I can't say that I blame them. If they Years of hardship whittled their resolve. That will not befall me, this I tell you. I'm sticking to my guns no matter what. Every year, perhaps a few, the Rabidjan will flourish too. In a year, perhaps a year or two. It isn't like we haven't tried. And we'd not be the first to leave. Isa. I can't think <laughs> why you're goading me. We, we've all been misinformed by Stalin's propaganda. More for me. We've come far too far to change our minds now. There's no turning back. change our minds. The point of no return has passed. There's no turning back. This is our home. There's, There's no, no turning, turning back. back. Governor of Berbijan and State Resettlement Committee are delighted to welcome Master Faria Oscar Levin and his two children, David and Bela Levin. 
This mortal family had moved all the way from decadent capitalist California to partake in uplifting life of socialist republic of workers and peasants. Let us give them warm Siberian welcome, a hearty round of applause for our honored comrades, Levin. This doesn't bode well. Maybe not a good omen, still we cannot turn back. Having come quite this far, we they haven't have a strength. And no quite your conviction. We'll not turn our back on our Zionist dreams. So easy to sit laying back in our armchair. Shooting your mouth off. Exploring philosophies, no harder to put where my mouth is my money. But you've been in the bullet, moved us all here. Communist life is to us more appealing than settling in the Middle East or the old world. Blood is thicker than water So with a handful of thoughts And a handful of hope Out of the frying pan Into the fire We've been in the bullet Moved our songs here Bela, I didn't raise you to use that kind of language. Besides, I'm sure there's more than just one horse. There's two asses pulling that tractor. Well, they don't just use a plow. That's enough. We've not come all this way not to give it our best shot. So chin up, kiddos. Best foot forward. And knee shoes. Please, comrades, follow me. I will be taking you to your new home. Mm, it's only it took me to Balka. What was that? <laughs> Nothing. The Lieberman household. Morel and Zafir are preparing the home for Passover by ridding it of any eleven crumbs. Out with chametz, out with the chametz. Wheat, rye, barley, oats and spelt. Out with chametz and the dirt can go too. Wheat, rye, barley, oats and spelt. My darlings, isn't it exciting? Our first Seder in our new home. Passover's my favorite feast. Then you'll enjoy tonight. Will you settle down, please? And our soft decorum's worth something or other. I couldn't get any wine, so we'll just do without and improvise on a couple of things. It's not ideal, but it's the thought that counts. This night is quite different from all other nights. We're all very lucky to be here. The Seder will explain some of that. The word Seder means order. Let's show some respect in synchronization with the entire diaspora. Amen. So, so we shall do as was done, done before us by generations that go back forever. We eat symbolic food and drink four cups of wine to make a long story short. Would it be disrespectful? So we recount our ordeal once every year to remind us of how it feels to be free. Did you see that spoiled young thing? So well fed, she won't freeze in the winter. And so tanned. Clearly from a planet much closer to the sun. Come winter, they'll hoy. They should last so long. Yenta told me she took one look at the girl and turned on a shackle. That's what she said. Red lipstick. I ask you, it's patriotic. That David, though, Zofia, he's quite the looker. Maybe I should have a chat with Yenta. Put in a good word, make sure no one else gets there first. Oh, mother, stop it. Did you see him smiling at everybody? So certain that we would all find him so charming and irresistible. If they are spies, God forbid, at least the party will know what to do with them. <laughs> Women, enough! Their name is Levin. What goy have you ever heard named Levin? A Jewish goy, that's who. How she looks. So what does it matter how she looks? Of course she's tanned. They come from Malibu. Must have gone Meshuggah to move here. But, but you'd better be nice to her. It was hard for you to adjust. It'll be even harder for her. Out with her mates, it won't take me long. Not in such a pokey little wooden shack. Bela, don't start. Your mother got the house, the car they got, and more than half my money. Sooner we live in a small house on an adventure than a cardboard box on the street. Try not to be too ungrateful. I'm doing my best. I know, Daddy, I'm sorry. It's my first day without her. I'm still trying to get used to it. 
You know, there's a lot for me to have to get used to doing. Not least of all, having to do the entire service in Russian. You're telling me. A secular seder, if you ask me, rather misses the point. Nevertheless, out with the maids. Wheat like barley oats and smelt. Good evening. Chag Samech, comrade. We've come to document your first Passover in Birbijan. Oscar, please allow me to introduce our photographer and journalist from the newspaper Prevda. We've been expecting you. Uh, please, do come in. Yes, do come in. Please allow me to present my children and apprentices, my son David and my daughter Bela. Comrade Levin, you have a beautiful home. Yes, and very large. Joshua. I mean, for Birobichan. And warm. You must be freezing. Uh, come in. Uh, make yourselves at home, and you can hang your coats up there by the fire. Whom read Lim? Uh, who, me? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm still getting used to the name. How is it you speak Russian? Uh, my parents immigrated from Minsk. Uh, there were many Russians where I grew up. Where is you grew up? In New York. New York? Well, that's very far away now, isn't it? Well, don't let us interrupt your evening, please. Miss Levin, you were preparing the table. That's exactly the kind of image I'm looking to capture. Mr. Levin, we brought you some gifts. Here, please accept these on behalf of the State Resettlement Committee. Would you look at the size of that fish? And look, crane, macaroons, uh, and wine, a kosher wine, and a portrait of Stalin. Comrade Levin, you do understand, do you, that your moving to Birbijan is highly symbolic? It's hoped in high places that your presence and your family's experience will attract international attention to this autonomous region, and soon to prosper through the exploitation of local natural resources. Well, as a furrier, I'd be glad to pitch in with my know-how. I'm not expecting a free lunch. I have no doubt of it. Isn't it remarkable that millions of Jews all over the world are celebrating all at the same time? But that only in autonomous region of Birbijan can you celebrate free from oppression. South America, Canada, Australia, South Africa, Rhodesia, Shanghai, most of the US and Britain aside. And on the other side of the world, in Siberia, hey, once we should be happy to be here. Perhaps you all have glasses. I'd like to take picture of you all making toast. Over there, we can get portrait in the shot. There we go. A toast to the Soviet Zion. Uh, thanks both to Herzl, but mainly to Stalin. Ross! I mean, mean uh, Ross, Ross. Something's not right. They look too American, too decadent. Look at how they're dressed. Mm, we need some locals. Comrade Oscar, we have a small problem. We do? What's that? A luxury issue, really, if you will. We have this bounty here, plus all that your daughter's prepared, but for only three people. In the spirit of proletarian solidarity. Proletarian what? Party-mindedness, if you will. It, I, I think it would only be appropriate for the sake of photograph if we invited more people, proportional to the amount of food. Well, I suppose it's a mitzvah to have a guest for Passover. And this shoot would acquire far deeper political significance if you were seen sharing your celebrations. Your neighbors are Liebermans. Their daughter is newsreader, Sophia Lieberman. You haven't met them yet? No, uh, we haven't. Not not yet. Well, then, isn't this perfect time to do so? Save some film for later. Come along. You can both accompany me and let Bale finish preparing table. Already this is the strangest Passover service I've ever seen. Papa, I don't even think they're Jewish. The Liebermans? No, those two men. Make sure you set an extra place. For Mother? No, Bela, for Elijah. The prophet Elijah. Come on, Bela, pull it together. We're under intense scrutiny here, in case you hadn't realized. Think before you speak. Yes, Papa, I'm sorry. Right, that's enough. We've still got a lot to prepare. A broch is someone at the door. Who on earth do you think it is? How do you want I should know? Oh, no, no, don't trouble yourself. You just stay right there. I've only been slaving over a hot stove, Isa, and I've only cleaned every inch of the house, and I certainly haven't made hand puppets for each one of the plagues. Such a meal. I make something from nothing even, and you see, Zofia, the thanks I get. Enough already, so I'm going. It, it looks like an official visit, Morel. There, there are three men in uniform. Well, go and see what they want. Good evening. Comrade Lieberman? Yes? I need you to follow me. 
but we're in the middle of... Just a moment, please. Now, comrade. As you wish. Morel, Zafia, put on your hats and coats. Papa? Now, please, there are people waiting to take us. Who? And to where? I don't know. Uh, officials. But the sooner you stop asking questions, the sooner we'll find out. Are we in trouble? For what? They only interrupt us tonight. Tonight, I'm just saying. You know, Morel, you could have said, Tonight, why is this night different from all other nights? So funny, <laughs> Iser. You should have been a genius comedian. Anyway, so we'll have the other half of the meal to look forward to later. Sophia, make with a hat already. I'm putting on my hat. What's taking you so long to put on a hat? Why haven't you put a hat on yet? Still no hat, Isa. She wants to die of cold, God forbid, and for me to grieve. Our own daughter, the newsreader, knock. And did you put the lid on the pot? I did it already. You covered it properly with the lid? With the lid. I did it already. I didn't hear you do it. Isa, go and do it properly. Put the pot on the lid. I mean the... Put the lid on the pot! You want to come home to cold food? But what could they want? You hear such terrible stories. The door, Morel! It's that way. Whatever it is we haven't done is much worse than whatever it is you must think. Are we ready? Let's go! Very well, comrades. Follow me. Won't it be nice to meet your foreign neighbours Who have so much in common I'm sure you'll be good friends I'm sure you'll agree that there's no better time To help them to adapt to make this place feel like home Hello, it's a pleasure to meet you Shalom, welcome to my home It's a humble abode, but it serves me quite well We've lived here since a week ago So we shall do as was done before us by generation that go by forever We eat symbolic food And drink four cups of wine To make a long story short We'll be disrespectful So we recount our ordeal Once every year To remind us of just How it feels to be free I listen to your every newscast You help me improve my Russian Good boy, sit down You have a beautiful voice, Sophia but with such a face, what a waste. A waste? I mean, to be on the radio and not the silver screen. A silver screen? Oh, he means in the movies, pay no attention. He's just starstruck. Vela, I'm hardly a star. I just read the news and mm. do as I'm told. If asked, I'm sure any Soviet patriot would do the same. <laughs> what a delicious feast. Thank you for inviting us, Mr. Levin. You're most welcome. And call me Oscar. I think now I have all the shots I need so we can leave you alone to enjoy the rest of your evening. It's been a pleasure. I will make sure to write the most favorable report. A report? What kind of report? Well, nothing to be concerned about, comrade. It's quite commonplace. We all report to our superiors. Oh, I see. Well, I'll make sure to remember that. Mind how you go now. I think, Mr. Levin, it's also time for us to head home. Oh, please, call me Oscar. The pleasure was all mine. <gasps> we don't drink five delicious glasses of delicious wine every night of the week, you know. Good looking, David. Oh, <laughs> how embarrassing. I mean, good night, David. <laughs> My case in point. Thank you again, Oscar. It was very generous of you to share these delicacies with us. You're most welcome. Zygazinkt. Goodbye! Thank you.
documenting the sunny day, paying particular attention to Bela. Please could you pass me that red paper there? I've got glue all over my hands. Here, catch. What's that supposed to be? I mean, what are you making? It's a portrait. Of? Lenin. It looks more like Lincoln. Oh, well, I hardly think that's appropriate. Here, let me give you a hand. Excuse me, is this the Levin address? Yes, that's right. I have a delivery here that will need to be signed for. Wait here, I'll fetch my father. I doubt your father's name is Bela, comrade. Ouch, my ears are burning. Did somebody whisper my name? Yes. <gasps> Look, David, my trunk. Oh, I'd forgotten how big it was. <laughs> you make it too easy. Hold your main tongue. Here, hold this too. Okay, sign. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Come on. Good day. It sure is. And may you not be hit by a truck, especially not a big one. Girls, can you give me a hand? Mine are all covered in glue. It's finally here. Yes, it's arrived. My beautiful coats. How have they survived? We're swimming and mink in the Malibu sun. I'm schwitzing, but boy, was I chic. How tongues used to wag. But to be fair, I like the attention, so I didn't care. But here in the winter, we'll be swimming in snow. So there a necessity I should have known. I wish I had the foresight, well, rather the room to bring with me the weapon and I'll leave the baboon. I know your adages, you can't have enough. Less here is more, though. Please pass me my muffin. Know that it's cold, Bela, don't get me wrong. Just try to remember we're in a town full of peasants. David, you're right, I will put up a fight. But if you can please pass my monkey fur hat. With pleasure, but you know, mm -hmm. it makes you look fat. David, you pots, tell me why am I here? I support you and Dad, and your ideals and much. When you wanted to move, yes, you did. there's no need to mock me. You think I look fat? This new land affords me no luxury life. Please don't deny me my small simple pleasures. These trappings are just little perks of your work. And besides, it's cuisine which my tongue thinks is mean. My zaptic physique, but in future, let's bleak. Don't get me wrong. You are perfectly slim It's just that I really want us to fit in These people are simple The way that they think Does not fit so well with your collection of mink The astrakhan may be, but not the baboon Please won't you stop With this hullabaloo Papa, he is teasing me it's true the depression hasn't aided our wealth It's been hard but thank God we still have food on the table We both know that we are not millionaires There's simply no room here for airs and graces Our luxury problems are somewhat misplaced Much bigger things are at stake in this place We're not here as martyrs to die for a cause we're pioneer Soviet Zion, of course. No, 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 no. You, pioneer Soviet Zion, of course. You advocate what seems to me a lost cause. It's thousands of miles away from what we knew. But we're in this together. It's just me and you. This is what I wanted. I know I agreed. It just doesn't satisfy all of my needs. Time will prevail, and I know you'll adapt. Pass me the scissors, I'll help you unwrap. <laughs> no, that's okay, Daddy. We need to finish getting ready for the pageant tomorrow. I remember, Baylor. You were in a pageant once. <laughs> no, it means something quite different here, Daddy. <laughs> I'm very proud of you, you know, Baylor. You too, David. Benjamin, your dinner is ready. Baylor, I see that you have real passion for fur. There was a time when I would live for glamour. You know, there is a beast who roams around here with the most beautiful, astonishing, plush, 
luxurious. Oh, never mind. I'm sure it's nothing that you'd be interested in. Forget I even mentioned it. Oh, what? No, 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 no. Don't tease me. What is it? What were you going to say? You know I hunt. Well, in a forest not far from here, there is a kind of wild bull. Well, it's not really a bull. It's more of a lion, really. But crossed with a jaguar, with an exquisite pelt, thick, rich, luxury. It's quite rare everywhere else, but here, you're in luck. What's it called? Oh, I'd be surprised if you'd heard of it. Like I said, it's very rare. A very rare kind of ball. Try me. It's called a gully. A gully ball? Yes. You're right. I have never heard of a gully ball. (laughs) You'd think I would. (laughs) My father's a furrier. I know all about all kinds of animals. You say there's one not too far from here? Not very far at all. (laughs) What is the matter with those two? Well, we are all done here, I suppose. So you think you can show me? Can we go and find one? Most certainly, intrepid huntress. Your Siberian safari awaits. How do we catch it? That's easy. You imitate its call. Its call? Yes, it makes a very particular sound like this. It's in two parts. See if you can do it. Okay. First part sounds like... Aima! Aima! Second part... Foo! So, did you get it? Both parts? Mm, I think so. Then give it a go. Nice and loud now, Baila. I am a foo! I am a foo! Yes, that's quite right. Well, let's go and see what we can find. <laughs> see you two later. I am a fool! I am a fool! <laughs> <laughs> you know, in light of such a warm day and such fine company, Sophia, I could think of many other things I'd rather be doing. Really? And given the current state of the world, what could really be more important? The honoured guests arrive tomorrow. I'm sorry, Sophia. I didn't mean to offend you. I see you're also very passionate. Every time I read the news on air, David, I understand more and more of what's happening in the world. It's not always news I want to break. We live in extreme times. Ours is a great nation in the throes of fundamental change. A revolutionary... well, a revolution. And we're all part of that. This country will change the way the entire world will think. And you and I... We're living examples of that in action. Okay. David, I don't understand what you keep saying. What is okay? What does it mean? It means... I accept you. I understand you. It means yes. Good, I approve. (gasps) So... What do you think? Okay, I guess. It's getting dark, what time is it? I wish I had a watch like that. I wish I had a watch at all. I wish this kiss would never end. I have to go, my mother worries. I'm sure Oscar too. Let's get this secret between me and you. Okay. The painted cardboard effigies from the previous scene now grace the town hall, bedecked in red flags. We catch the very tail end of an official speech welcoming a foreign delegation to Birobijan. Oi, 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 do they ever draw out these events? Sophia, you have a joke for me? You hear any good ones? No, I haven't, please. I'm trying to listen. Well, I've got a good one. <laughs> a man, Mr Goldberg, he asks his wife... Daddy, if... shush! Comrades and fellow citizens, May I ask you please to give a warm welcome to our most distinguished guests, the delegates of World Peace Alliance. The world as it once was understood exists no longer. The Spanish Republic has been crushed. The Third Reich moves from strength to strength. And in Jerusalem, a jihad has been declared upon the Jews. 
Hundreds have been killed by the local Arabs, supplied with arms by the agents of Mussolini and Hitler, whilst the British mandate authorities in Palestine steadfastly refuse entry to Jewish refugees fleeing the persecution in Europe. The rumors you may have heard from your relatives to the west of here are far from exaggerated and most likely true. So the good news is that more than ever, Piro Bejen is the real beacon of hope for the Jewish people. A safe net may well be a trap we're all constrained into. Conspiracy states are ridiculous, suddenly they cast a shadow. Socialist internationalism would compel the Soviet Union to at least help the Jews of Palestine. Busy deluding themselves, their petty bourgeois nationalism must be firmly rejected. A baloney! We all have friends who've gone there who I imagine are having a wonderful time. Ergo, they haven't come back. Besides, what's keeping us here in this godforsaken place is far less compelling than why they left. My mother often says that more important than a dream is to work hard. At times, I've often found it very hard to agree with her. But in this instance, I dare say, David, that I do agree. Here we are creating a new world, based on principles that will revolutionize everything. The Israel of prayer, David, is not a real place. It's just a dream. A 5,600-year-old game of Chinese whispers. Desert sand. This place, where we are right now, is very much a reality. Our reality. My reality. My home. I want a match. An American Jew bag like you and a Soviet superhero like Sophia. She couldn't boil an egg without quoting Lenin. At least I'm dating a Jew, Bela, which is more than I can say for you. It must have been hard to choose between him and a ham sandwich. It's 1939, David. Get with the times. Besides, look around. Slim pickings. Pork scratchings. Your handsome prince is missing two teeth and has more hair on his back than on his head. Oh, never have I known such a never. I pity your brother. Stop the Craig and Uke Dagen! Steiner or Zena Bainer, you filthy hazard. <gasps> May you be transformed into a chandelier to hang by day and to burn by night. Kish men took us. <laughs> Knock it off, you two! People are staring! Oh, Mother, I think I may have made a ghastly mistake in falling for David. He is so frivolous and headstrong. What have I done to get involved with such a dangerous boy? Sophia, it's only a matter of time before he sees that the Soviet Union is the best nation on Earth, and surely the safest, so I wouldn't worry. I, Sir Lieberman, you are being arrested on a charge of cosmopolitanism. What madness is this? It was reported that without authorization you were erecting signposts, bearing names of foreign cities, vandalizing a public space, a flagrant and treacherous display with no regard for consequences. No, no, you cannot do this! Yes, madam, we most certainly can. I advise you to stand back. But it was me, sir. Comrade, I swear it was all my idea. I asked him to do it. It was my decision. Sir, it wasn't his. Oh, please, you must let him go. Eyewitnesses testify that you were indeed aiding and abetting him, Comrade Lieberman. 
but that it was your husband who undertook the deed. So he will have to face consequences. No! You should consider yourself lucky. Where are you taking him? He will be taken to a disciplinary compound west of here where he will remain until his case will be considered by the relevant authority. I encourage you, both of you, to display the militant discipline that these dangerous times require of us all. Especially you, Sophia. Now it begins, it never ceases. The wild cockerels have been released. As if on command, your head was unleashed. Unrestricted in flows and travels east. Along the railways, along the rivers. in the sea as the waves crash around me anchored firmly to the ground I refuse to be moved I cannot wash my many storms these spring tides shall not defeat me I can't concentrate it's just awful about Isa no in fact I can't concentrate because it is just awful here period why did you drag us to this crazy country it was hardly a Jewish nation if God's forsaken it so really what was the point he hasn't even told you about the visitors coming tomorrow what again with the parade it would not have escaped your notice that we live a darn sight better than most people in Barabajan oh another show to put on play happy family Siberian special the 100th episode we're performing monkeys and you were so ashamed of mother for doing the very same thing how dare you speak of your mother like that if your sister were here I would give you a smack I'm not entertaining negotiations. Don't sass me, you hear? I'm no exceptions. I love and want what's best for you, David. I hope you know that, son. Yes, father. And do not talk to me about your mother. Yes, father. Father, I need to talk to you. This is
Has the time come to make our retreat? David, go tell Sophia we're leaving. Leaving? Listen, what if I tell her to come with us? What is the matter with you? Have you got my sugar? No, no, no. She will squeal to the authorities and have us all put into prison just like a David, be sensible. You couldn't breathe a word of this. Not to anyone. And you just drop your beloved. Mind your own business. I've got so much on my mind No answer's easy to find Am I in control of my fate Or is my family of my fate and my destiny. Looking out the window, I can see across the tundra, painted in gray hues, it stretches for eternity. My imagination and a strong sense of adventure urge me from my situation to a new life far away I've got so much on my mind no answers easy to find taking control of my fate and my Oscar to intercede on behalf of your father. After all, Mr. Levin is a very important person, being the international face of Birobidjan. He must have some influence. If we can persuade him to raise the issue, the party is bound to pay attention. A bit of an imposition, you don't think? To involve him in our personal affairs? It's your father's very freedom at stake. We must do everything we can. It's a good idea. We're going to get him out. Just you wait and see. You know, Sophia, 
The more I think about it, the more I'm sure that this is all just a terrible mistake. One that's bound to be swiftly rectified. Just as soon as they understand our innocent intention. You know. It would be a slap in the face to be betrayed by the man who asked me to replace the almighty with a mortal who claims he's infallible. How soon the cracks begin to show. Rather, we must invest all our Look, Sophie, I'll say what I like in my own home. For all our loyalty, they've taken from me my husband and don't even allow me to pray for his return. I'm sure you could understand why your dear leader isn't so dear to me today. What if he's not coming back? How do we make peace with it? He's in my thoughts wherever he is and I am still his daughter and he is still my father but mother has father betrayed us you to doubt your father How could that cross your mind? Excuse me, Comrade Levin Oscar, I mean, hello Zofia and I were wondering if we could ask of you a favor, I'm sorry to surprise you. Do you mind if we sit down? No, of course not. Please come in. So I'll get a good lawyer. Lennon had them all shot. Don't you mean Stalin? Mm, no, he took care of the doctors. The doctors and the lawyers? Oh, for boy, it'll be the rabbi next. <laughs> well, rabbi. Oscar, I beg of you. You know I'm a proud woman. I, I wouldn't ask you for help unless I really, really did need to call upon you. Morale, how could I possibly say no to you? I, I can't promise anything, but I will see what I can do. Perhaps in the event tomorrow, maybe, I can bend an ear or two. <laughs> Remind me to tell you that you're really a mensch. Good evening, comrades, and welcome to the first ever public event that Barabashan Radio will be broadcasting live. Stop the broadcast! <sighs> Officer, I have here an urgent communication for your immediate attention. Your attention, please. A political directive has just arrived from Moscow. Comrade Molotov, the foreign minister of USSR, has just returned from Berlin. A formal non-aggression pact has been signed that neutralizes the West's fiendish plan to foster artificial conflict between our two countries. German working class and Russian working class, no longer enemies, now standing shoulder to shoulder. Love has turned upside down. Because... 
even thought of that. Daddy, remember our plans to leave? Well, that ship seemed to have sailed without us on it. Baylor, not now. I'm trying to think. Resume your broadcast. Here is a new script. Good evening, comrades. Here is Zofia Lieberman reporting live from the Robert Municipal Hall at a spontaneous popular celebration of the diplomatic masterstroke of Comrade Molotov. I am to invite our guest speaker to nominate someone from the audience to make the first toast. Her? Me? Yes, you. Listeners, Comrade Mirabel Lieberman has been invited to make the first toast. Sophia, no, not me. Make them choose someone else. They want I should commend this? I can't, Sophia. It's a terrible thing Mother, he's done. we're live on air. You have no choice. You can't cross these men or we'll never get father out of prison. Is that what you want? Joshua and Baylor sit beneath the statue of the menorah. Passing strangers give them curt looks. A flock of birds fly overhead. Joshua is burdened by a secret, and it's just starting to rain. It breaks my heart to tell you, Bela, but I must confess that I've been telling lies to you since days after we met. I'd been asked to spy on you to verify your loyalty, I can't apologize enough for this duplicity. And now you wanna... I should forgive you? 
I don't even know what to say to you right now. I know I cannot expect you to forgive me. You must understand, I was given no choice. But I wrote a very favorable report, Byla. I overlooked a lot that could get you and your family into deep trouble and reported you all as sincerely committed to Soviet cause, even though I know this not to be true. So you, and your father, and even your brother with all his brazen talk of Zion, should be safe. Baila, what other choice did I have? Get out of here, you're out of schmuck! You goddamn son of a bitch! Please. I wish you the most horrible death. Why bother even getting up alive? Get out of my sight. I never ever want to see you again. Do you hear me? I hate you. I hate you. I'll see. country is this? Baylor, is David still not talking to me? You Russians! Especially you and your crazy politics! You and your brother are American. You're like two sweet kittens with no understanding, really, of how things actually are here in the USSR. Oh, kittens, schmittens! And if that really were the case, Sophia, and you have such an in-depth understanding, then please tell me, why is it that your father has been put into prison for no real reason? And why is it that every hour a train leaves Borobajan, carrying raw materials from Siberia straight to Nazi Germany? has launched a surprise attack on the USSR, violating our frontiers and bombing our western cities. An act of treachery unprecedented in the history of civilized nations. Our entire nation will wage war for our beloved country, for honor, for liberty. Our cause is just. The enemy will be beaten. Victory will be ours.
comrade. You have heard the stirring words. Birobidjan will stand up and be counted. All able-bodied males of military age are urged to present themselves at once to the offices of the Birobidjan military district. Who amongst you will be the first to demonstrate their bravery and devotion to this exemplary nation? I will. How convenient for you, Baylor. Ouch! Don't pinch me! I will. I'll fight too. And how? Let's give those Nazis what for. Uh, patience, comrades. We have been issued specific instruction. Whilst the volunteers will be rushed to defend the Western USSR, the remaining civilians must take precautionary measures against a possible Japanese attack. Sharpened stakes could be planted in the beetroot fields to impale descending Japanese paratroopers. What a stupid idea! I volunteer you as a human shield! Comrade Colonel, sir, my name is Mirella Lieberman. Uh, we've not met, I don't think, but you may recognize my daughter, the broadcaster. She reads the news on the radio. Uh, she is the newscaster, Zofia Lieberman. Ah, uh, yes, of course. What can I do for you, comrade? Well, it happens, officer, that my husband, Iser, uh, Iser Lieberman, Zofia's father, was, well, arrested on, on a somewhat spurious charge, a minor infraction, really. If you could petition for his release, sir... Well, then he could take part in a repelling Nazi invasion. He could be released that way? Mrs. Lieberman, this is not my decision to make. However, it is a reasonable and patriotic argument for his release, so perhaps I could make some inquiries. So, are you sure you'd want to send him to the front? The front? Oh. Sir, I need my husband released. I need my husband freed, so he can be my husband again and be father to our child. Comrade, I am proud, but I'm also desperate. I'll do my best, Mrs. Lieberman. I can appreciate how very difficult for you it must be all alone. You have no idea Every breath Every heartbeat Proclaims His I cannot tell you how much I appreciate your kindness. So now the world really is at war. At least it's clear who the bad guys are. The lines have been drawn. Now there's no turning back. It's not the best time for us to be American kids, so keep your wits about you. Bearing in mind who we're fighting, I suppose I'm happy that we're going to war. Don't speak too soon. David, are you really going to join the Red Army? Given what we're fighting, it's the only right thing to do. And don't tell Benjamin. But when I return, Sophia Lieberman, I'm gonna marry you! Fighting alongside our Russian brothers, we will all be fighting for a common cause, advancing what we all believe.
These are dangerous times, Miss Lieberman. They call for desperate measures. You never know when these skills I'm teaching you will come in handy. On the battlefield, it's a matter of kill or be killed. But there is another way. It consists of slamming the base of the nose, sending pieces of broken bone straight into the brain. Young lady, are you quite all right? Yes, quite fine. Please, carry on. I'll be okay. What? I'm sorry, I mean, I'll be fine. Our little girls, about to go to war. Dear Sophia, as I write this to you, the sounds of war peal through the air, and though I see an end in sight, nobody serenades me with their voices raised in gratitude. We are fighting for the greater good. I am fighting for Russia's survival. These enemies we face need to be vanquished, brought to justice. Each day we advance, soon we'll be fighting at the front. I need to do some good for all the hurt I may have caused you. Does my fighting prove to you that I have good intentions? I'll try to write again soon when I get a moment's peace. Please keep me in your prayers. Pray for the war to see. An official comes to distribute assignments. He says each girl's name in turn, followed by her new role in the war effort, until all the assembled young women have assignments. All the local girls are accounted for, until only Baylor and Zofia are left. Hilda Zaslavsky, Sniper School. Rumka Rabinovich, Radio Operator. Rivka Feldman, uh, Combat Medic. Clara Shapiro, Nurse. Rachel Greenberg, Artillery Production, and Esther Silverstein, Anti-Aircraft Artillery, Rebecca Bloom, Munitions Distribution. No, you risk him! No, you do it. Sophia, you know I'm shy! Excuse me, officer. Our names are Sophia Lieberman and Bela Levin. I know who you both are. We were wondering, please, what are our assignments? Yes, a voice beloved by the masses, Zofia Lieberman is exempt from military service, required instead to remain in Berbijan and continue her loyal service as radio newscaster. And skilled worker Baila Levin will remain working for her father's concern, which is under new contract to supply military. I didn't want to say so in front of others. People are jealous enough of you already, Comrade Levin. My hard work in tatters, what a waste of youth and beauty, and Benjamin, my unmarried son, off to war. What a waste of... what a waste. Don't worry, Yenta, they'll be back before you know it. Such a small bit of hardship, it will be character building. Besides, our Red Army is invincible, please God. Officer, I hate to disturb you because you must be so busy, but I was wondering whether you had any news for me about my Isa, my, my, my husband, Isa Lieberman's release? Ah, Mrs. Lieberman, of course. In urgency of nationwide mobilization, the release order seems to be misplaced. However, there is a good chance the political prisoners will be released anyway to help with war effort. Your suggestion was very well received. Thank you, officer. Sophia, what have I done? I may have just sent Daddy to war! Good evening, comrades, on the evening of Monday the 1st of December, 1941. My name is Sophia Lieberman. Here are the latest reports. The Nazi armies have been stopped at the gates of Moscow, ill-equipped for the Russian winter, lacking the advanced Red Army uniforms and our fierce determination to fight to the death. The Nazis have been pinned down at the gates of Moscow after suffering grievous losses. 
in Isa's cell. Please, I beg you, deliver this to my wife, Morel Lieberman. She lives in Barobijan, next to the Americans everyone was always talking about. Or to my daughter, Zofia, at the radio station. Oh, please, comrade, please. Another one? Please. He hands a handwritten letter to the guard who takes the letter out of Isa's sight, first reading and then tearing it up. Good evening, comrades. An urgent dispatch has just been received, announcing that the Japanese have launched a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. Lights reveal Oscar and Baylor in a busy workshop supervising the production of military garments. The women workers surreptitiously pass from hand to hand an illustrated magazine whose cover is graced by a uniformed Hollywood pin-up and whisper excitedly among themselves while casting sidelong glances at Oscar who feigns indifference. Mirelle shows up with a glint in her eye, waving another copy of the same magazine. Oscar! Uh, Mr Levin, may I speak to you in private, please? Oscar, you dark horse! Look at what I found in this magazine! Look! At a gala fundraising event to support the Jewish autonomous region in the far east of Russia, this starlet admits to having a son and a daughter who left America for Birobidzhan and are actively engaged in a Soviet war I have war no effort. idea what you're talking about. What has this to do with me? I never thought that you Americans could be even more secretive than us Russians. The lady in this magazine, could she be your wife? Morel, please. I don't want to speak about it. Daddy, look! Oh! Hello, Morel. Daddy! <laughs> Look who is in this magazine. You will never guess who. It's Mama! There you go, Morel. I guess that answers your question. And David never told a thing to Sophia. Oh, to be married to a Hollywood star! <laughs> and to wind up here, of all places, you must tell me everything. Forgive me if I don't speak highly of your Hollywood star. She is rather a sore subject for me. Mother was always a very glamorous no, woman. No, Baylor. Mother was not always a very glamorous woman. Baylor, you and your brother had a very privileged upbringing. And that's all you've known. But I worked hard. Very hard to get us all there. And it is not how your mother nor I raised. You never had a reason to ask me about that part of my life. And I can't imagine it's a time your glamorous mother would have mentioned much. She has secrets? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. I think she has alternate version of events. What do you mean? Did she ever tell you about her father's line of work? Yes, Zadie worked in jewelry. <laughs> no, Baylor, that's not strictly true. What do you mean? He was a thief. Don't, don't tease me. This isn't very respectful. I'm not teasing you, Baylor. He was a selfish, untrustworthy, lying dreck of a man. And boy, was she ever a daddy's girl. No, oh, you want to talk about respectful? I didn't find it too respectful that a mother would abandon her children to chase a selfish and ridiculous dream. Oh, is that so? I didn't abandon my children. I didn't run away to honor a whim to be an actress when I not only have dubious talent, but I have zero acting lessons and I never even been on stage. Not once, and I can't dance, I can't sing, I certainly can't act. But a pretty face I have, so I'll work something out. Screw the husband, screw the kids, Hollywood, here I come. Look, and boss luck. What did you say? It can be true. My hard work and my devotion to her reprieved her from a life of what? To follow in her father's footsteps. And this is how she repays me and you and your brother for all of our love. You don't think shame has chased me to the end of the world and back and beyond? Enough already. What absurd lies. What schluck did she tell you about why she left me? No, actually, forget it. I don't want to hear about it. I certainly don't want to talk about it. Whatever it is she told you, I hope you're aware in the light of day of how ridiculous it must sound. Morel, you see how dirty is this laundry? Now you understand why I don't want to talk about it! What is it about Hollywood, anyway? Oh, it's a magical place. You never seen a movie? A what? A movie, a, a talking picture. Like in the cinema? Yeah! No. No? No, no! She wants I should have seen a talking picture. Until we moved here, Bail, I'd scarcely been out of my village, which certainly didn't have a picture house. Well, what did you do for fun? Well, we didn't have fun either. I had an uncle once who had a friend saw a movie. He saw an airship hit the moon in its eye and it frightened the life out of him and on the spot, he dropped down dead. Hemis Hashem, that's what he said. So I decided that a movie, that wasn't anything for me. <laughs> what? Was it something I said? You are so funny. So uh, you've no idea who uh, Karma Miranda is. Who? What's that on your head for? Or Charlie Chaplin? Or Mae West? Who? What are you pulling that face for? And you've never ever seen a musical? No. What is it?
Oh, it is the happiest thing you ever saw. With thousands of chorus girls, oh, beautiful costumes, and tap dancing. I can't even imagine what that is. <laughs> Vela, show Morel some soft shoe. Okay, but I'm a little rusty. Baylor dances a tap routine around the farrier's workshop to a lively accompaniment, improvising rhythms on the items she encounters and dancing with the dressmaker's dummy. Oh, Baylor, that's just wonderful. However, did you learn such a thing? Mm, American girls do it for fun. You know, I can juggle too. So just pass me uh, the scissors, oh. the iron and the knife. <laughs> I'm only joking. Why don't you show Morel a move or two? Sure. Oh, I don't know. Oh, come on. It'll be fun. I'm not as young as I used to be. Can you believe it was so many years ago I moved here? Think how much the world has changed. How little, really. Baylor, it can't have been easy for you moving here. Do you ever think of returning to America? We've been here for years. How American do you think I still am? That's not what I meant. Huh. I don't think it's too safe to be a Russian in America either. And nowhere is it too safe to be a Jew. Right. Well, I'd best be going. I promise, Oscar, my lips are sealed. I have thought about it, Bill. I really thought very hard about it indeed. But I couldn't think of what I may have done to deserve... You know... From your mother. I'm sure you didn't deserve it. I hope you're not upset with me for what I said, darling. Her betrayal is far worse than my honesty. I know she's not coming back With this I've made my peace She's in my thoughts Wherever she is Maybe I'm still Soviet winter counteroffensive has been launched against the stalled invader. The Soviet people are to take to the streets in their support for the resurgent and soon to be victorious Red Army. It's good news. Just a moment, Morel. Okay, comrades, the party line is to have a party, I guess. So that's it for today. See you tomorrow, ladies. Go enjoy yourselves. You've been working hard. You deserve it. Bela, Yenta and the workers each grab a red flag and file out, waving it and chanting patriotic slogans. Morel and Oscar are left facing each other in the empty workshop. They begin tidying up, folding a piece of fabric together. Their hands touch. Look at me, I'm is what you do to me Look at me I'm I should feel good. 
beauty. Me. I myself indulgent. I choose not to warn me. I self indulgent. Shh, I feel more guilty. I'm very self indulgent. I know it's precious. I know it can be dangerous too. I'm no Till my pen broke and my fingers broke And oh how I wrote And how I waited And I'm still waiting To hear from you I wrote I instead I should have said goodbye Myself to God In Him I find peace I don't understand I'm sorry This cannot be I fully understand I'm sorry, Morel it was inappropriate of me. Death of Hitler. Total victory. The war is over. Mothers and fathers, your boys are returning home. Not just as men, but as heroes. The next train to arrive at Platform 2 is the 1809 Trans-Siberian Service, calling at Khabarovsk, Pusarisk, and Vladivostok, where this train will terminate. Mother, do I look pretty? Do you think David will be happy to see me? Believe me already that you're alive and well and still have all your own teeth, please God, is more than enough. <laughs> of course you look beautiful. It would have been a while since he's seen a pretty girl. I'm sure he'll march you straight to bed. Mother! <laughs> but you're so thin, I keep telling you, Sophia, you should eat. Come here, you've got some smooths on your cheek. Oh, enough already. You don't think I'm nervous enough? Please stop agitating what me. What is it all of a sudden? I can't even say boo to my own goose. <gasps> Gewalt, he's here already. Sophia Lieberman. You and I are to be married. So let it be decreed. A wedding shall proceed. Smash the glass. Into the smithereen. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. Now we'll be joined together, man and wife. I'm overjoyed to have a wife like you. You're all that I could want, the perfect wife and mother. Though that remains yet to be seen, we'll rouse a revolution stage. Of 
But knock us on this joyous day A privilege to be your mother-in-law An honor indeed to give my daughter away To such a fine upstanding family Everyone loves a wedding Under the hope to celebrate love true to fall We will all be in tears That's because we are simply so happy In fact we are all the joy it's been some years since arriving here Beer rubbish and has started feeling like home To my life here I've become accustomed To my destiny resign This celebration is a welcome break From our routine May love for heaven's sake I cannot believe that you're still complaining Papa of tragedy we've every cause today to celebrate i'm so in love with my wife sophia now wipe that frown from your face if your father were here i know he'd be so proud you look more like him than you'll ever know now you've a new man in your life to provide for i'm sure
up in smoke over Voy Morel. Even here it spread all the way here to Siberia. And they say the order came from Stalin himself. What? Half a million Jewish soldiers, Morel. Half a million died fighting for the Red Army, including my Benjamin. May his memory be a blessing. And this? This is how they're honoured? I'm sorry. Sorry? No, I'm sorry. May Hashem avenge his blood. being given very careful consideration by some very high-ranking officials. That you have both proven yourselves politically reliable has not gone unnoticed. A decorated war hero backing this petition, though, is what I think did trick. David? David Levin? Yes, I'll keep you posted. Maybe, Zofia, just maybe, things are going to work out, kind of horror. In the British Mandate of Palestine, a new wave of road ambushes has resulted in the death of dozens of refugees, most of them post-war survivors from Europe. Egypt and Syria have once again stated their unshakable resolve to assist their Palestinian brothers in their righteous fight to push into the sea every last one of the Zionist intruders. Righteous fight, my ass. Father? You asked me earlier what I wanted to do with myself now that the war is over. Yeah, well, do you have any thoughts? I always told you to follow your heart. Yes, 
I've discovered that I'm a very good soldier. Well, as long as you stay good at it, that's a good thing. That's good news. And I think I have good prospects to further my career in the military. Well, that's very good news, David. It's good to have a strong vision. And what's more, I have decided that I'm going to return to the front line. Well, that's not good news. In the Holy Land. Well, that's terrible news. David, I think you make an honorable and commendable decision. Papa, I think you have some nerve. Baylor, don't sass me! You are a hypocrite! You stole me away from my childhood, my ambitions, my entire life in the free world. And you bring me here, to Baropajan, to pursue your Yiddish cultural heritage, not mine. I was American, and so are you, and that's what Baburnzeta went there to become. Your dinner party spiel about a Soviet Zion has no one but you at the side! We were too young to have a choice. David, it scares me half to death when you are out on the front. I even pray for you, which is not something I do very often. But I prayed harder than anything ever in my life. And now you're here safe. So, really, I should do that more often. I think, though. And the more I think about it, especially now that this horrible war is over, don't we all deserve a fresh start? And I suppose in such a hot country, there must be an enormous demand for fur coats. We could always move to Jerusalem, make hats for the Orthodox. Oh, I mean a fresh start. I don't have to be a furry. I could do anything. Like what? I could become a film star. Oh, Bela, stop Ah, oh, David, did that remind me of I got news for you? Bela, that's enough. David, the difference between your Zion and mine is that I never risked your life in coming here. And you are literally laying yours on the line for a country that exists only in your head. I am willing to work hard, and who better than me? I've learned from the mistakes of the Soviet Zion. It's a secular leap of faith, pledging our lives to this experience. Who knows what to expect and who knows what to hope? I strongly believe we need a place to call home. I've not just logic, but God on my side. And if you'd have only seen the things I've seen, I suppose you'd build a paradise. I hate to break it to you, but I've heard that one before. Surrounded by people on all four sides Who want to drive you into the sea What auspicious new beginnings Mrs. Lieberman, it appears the order to release Isa had already been issued a couple of years ago but was misplaced somewhere or lost given political and military upheavals of recent times. What? Yes, but I have absolutely no idea when Isa will be released. Moscow will have to decide. The local division of the Subdirectorate of Conditional Releases, if so advised by the Office of the Principal Deputy of Ministry of Border Security, you understand. A renewed inquiry has been forwarded, but we'll just have to wait and see. Officer, I, I don't know what to say. I'm so... I mean, I'm very... I'm really... Well, what can I say? I'm so clumped. I have no idea what that means. But let me remind you, Comrade Lieberman, that had he been released into a penal battalion, he almost certainly would now be dead. Like so many of our other promising young and innocent citizens. So keeping him incarcerated has been rather a blessing, you could say. A blessing, he says. Oh, jeez. For painting a signpost. For ideologically deviant behavior. Zofia, hold your tongue. Patience, Comrade. Lieberman is a virtue. Oh, Mother, this is good news, Sophia. Go back to your husband. Go. Just a moment, Comrade Lieberman. I was just discussing your case with my colleague here. 
I think we have found a way for us to work together. You have? In exchange for the immediate release of your husband. Oh, oh officer, I'll do anything. You are to prove your party loyalty by acting as our eyes and ears, reporting any ruthless cosmopolitan actions, anti-Soviet sentiment, and, particularly Mrs. Lieberman, any Zionist sympathies. Zionist sympathies? In particular, Comrade Lieberman, you are to keep a close eye on Levin family. The Levins? Whose American origin makes them particularly suspicious. Your daughter is a news reader. I'm sure you've been following news. America is our biggest threat, and Americans all the more so. I expect you, on the last day of the month, to report to my office to dictate a 2,000-word report. Mrs. Lieberman, all reports are cross-checked against those of other informants. If you conceal information that is later brought to light, not only you, but also Sophia could end up in jail. So my advice to you is to be honest. Congratulations, comrade. It seems things are looking up for you. And so I'm left with little choice How to be true to my integrity I'll do my best, endure this trial This all shall pass in just a little while Assured I have the best interests at heart I'll try in the meantime Not to fall apart I've decided we are leaving with With Birabishan are needed elsewhere to support the Holy Land. If you're asking me to follow as you blindly lead by, the Rabbishan is still my home and long shall it remain. There's no turning back. This is my home. Sophia, I am going Speak Hebrew. Where 
Russian Jews who've been raised in Siberia from the tundra into the desert out of the frying pan into the fire I'll not leave my mother she needs me at her side go if you want to don't let me stand in your way one day when you realize what you've left behind you'll know where you can find me I'm used to be mention this at all to my mother. Do you hear me? The train now approaching platform 2 is the delayed 1809 service calling all stations to Khabarovsk. At the train station, Morel and a small crowd are awaiting the arrival of a train, which duly pulls into and out of the station. Darkness. Morel is the only person left on the platform. As the steam clears, Morel sees Isa. She approaches him with great caution, as if afraid he's an apparition that may disappear at any moment. She finally touches Isa to make sure he's real. He jumps, surprised, and they embrace. Do you want me with all these bruises? Can you really shoulder the burden? My heart's in the palm of your hand. Here I'm standing naked before you. wide open my heart's in the palm of your hand Are you quite brave enough to accept the myriad of challenges? Are you quite brave I'm not who I used to be As you can see, though scared and still bruised I battle on through Once again, a whole new beginning Once again, I'm wiping the slate clean My heart is family Lieberman, Morel and Zafia are in the kitchen preparing a meal, apprehensively watching Isa pray, waiting for him to finish before approaching him. His prayer turns to weeping. 
we see, despite his emancipation, that Isa has been irreparably disturbed. He struggles to pull himself together and finishes his prayer. Father, we're out of turnips. Would you prefer potatoes or parsnips with dinner? Both. Both? Isa, we're not millionaires. Where's it written? Besides, a potato and a parsnip don't cost the earth. They grow out of the ground. I'd love to give you both, Papa. I really would. But then we'd have neither to eat tomorrow. Um, parsnip then, I suppose. Or whichever. You decide for yourself, Sophia. If one day, please God, you are blessed with children, give them the chance. I do not want you to raise them here. Having always to choose between hardships. You're not the only one who wants to leave. You have every right to be bitter, Father, but... But nothing. Your sacred Communist Party is but a collection of mortals of fear. Human men. And as such are bound to make mistakes. Believe me, you think it wasn't a mistake I was thrown in prison? You don't think such a mistake could ever happen again, even to you? Listen to me, because I know, and I'm telling you this because you're my daughter and I love you. The only one you can truly trust is God. But Sophia, I don't really consider this a matter for debate. For the sake of my family, I'll turn a brave face. Swallow the memory stuck in my throat. I dreamt Papa would come back, I prayed for this day. But I didn't think it would be. The matters at hand are present too. Out with the hermetics, it's time to prepare. I'll not place my bets on precisely or exactly when. But I think things will return to normal. Just be patient. Out with her nets and the dirt can go too. Wheat, rye, barley, oats and spelt. At what time did David say we could expect them to arrive? Any minute now. Oh, you broke the here already. <laughs> come in, come in. Hello, it's a pleasure to see you. It's really been too long. Thank you for having us over. We've got some catching up to do. It's nice to see after so long that you are keeping well. You look healthy and happy, which of course is a very good thing. Still no ring on your finger though. Get your head in the game, as you Americans say. I only managed to rustle up three copies of the Order of Service, so we're going to have to share. Since the, uh, you know, book burning, these kinds of things aren't easy to find. And uh, here, a surprise. We thought you might enjoy one of these. I I guess you didn't see many whilst you were away. David. Oh, it's quite all right. Wow. Look, Morel, a banana. However did you get such an exotic thing? I mean, a banana, Oscar, really, a banana. (laughs) You like to know. No! I would rather not know. I would rather you not say a word. Right, that's enough. We've still a lot to prepare. As I've not been able to do it for quite some time, I've decided to conduct tonight's service in Hebrew. Morel is clearly displeased at this suggestion and leaves the table to prepare more food, frustratedly banging pots and pans in the kitchen. Yes, it'll be good practice. What for? Oh, uh, nothing, Morel. I mean, I I haven't spoken it since I was a boy. Uh, That's all. The shaman will read the bones And astrologers chart the sky And as misled in hope You play the language you don't understand To a god who is vengeful A god who is cruel You'd rather embrace the shamelessly imaginary. Why can't you face the truth? Oh, the matter, it 
wasn't God's love that released you. Isa, it was mine. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam. When you feel that rush and it catches in your throat and you take in a breath almost stabbing your heart the pain it never Just beats impulsively. I wouldn't recommend holding it in. Let it out from within. Let tomorrow begin. Let it start, let it end By the way you carry on Although I often feel sad At least I feel something Reminding me that I Is not the essence of being alive, then I have no desire in me left to survive. I'm not crying selfish tears, they're so profound and deep. The sadness caught inside of me tends to leap a bit. A black pearl that I cultivate for the best part hidden from you. Not a gift I'd want to share. If you love us all
someone you have to learn to let go. Page 193. A toast, each to express our redemption. I will take you out of suffering, deliver you from bondage. God will redeem us with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you myself as a nation. I will bring you to the land. Next year it says here in Jerusalem or somewhere else in Palestine. Here's to kicking the British out. David, it's very dangerous to say things like that. Oscar senses something is afoot. Morella. I'm fed up with starry-eyed idealists who want to reorder the world. Enough of utopias. Why couldn't we all have moved to a warm tropical island where we could all live in peace and quiet? Perhaps the prophet Elijah <laughs> come to pay us a visit. Oscar shoots her a look. Now he's sure she's hiding something. Morale, is there anything the matter? No. Terrified, she looks through a crack in the door. How strange. There's nobody there. The town square. Feigning casualness, Oscar and Morel, side by side, pretend to read the latest party proclamations affixed to the town hall, now graced by glossy posters of first-generation Soviet jet fighters. Be always aware and on constant vigil. Untrustworthy cosmopolitan elements seek to undermine the USSR from within. How to get our children out of this damned country? That is the question. Whatever do you mean? I cannot stay here in good conscience When I know there's more I can achieve The world is my oyster to a certain extent I'm not sure now what to believe I try putting my faith in Stalin Sharing his Soviet dream How stupid of me, I should have known better No one can say though, that we didn't try We tried our best, Morel I don't want our children to languish in the USSR for the rest of their lives Rotting when the rest of the world is probably in bloom. You keep your head low and do as you're told so that you can protect your loved ones. That's what counts in life, your family, your children. Yeah, Morel, you know I'm not stupid. You've been informing on me and my family. That knock at the door, they were simply letting you know that your Hebrew language stater and all your shaken up conversations were being monitored. After a few years in Barabajan, even a naive yank like me knows the score. Oscar, Morel, I... you want to pass on the authorities a message that I'm utterly fed up with the Soviet Union and that I'm ready to let the whole world know the reasons why. Oh, Oscar! The fact I'd be glad to confirm in person to the authorities. Have you lost your mind? Not at all! And your informing on me will keep you and both of our loved ones safe. Morel, I have a plan. Oscar, that's outrageous! I mean it's outrageous! My loss of faith furnished by fallacies! My fall from good graces cautioned! This changes everything and scares me to the bone. How do we know who our friends are? We came here to make an honest living. But our hope dies with our dreams. The land will outlive all of us and our integrity. I've come to grow very fond of you, Morel. Awake, oh west wind, and blow through my garden, that the autumn leaves may illustrate the wind. To return to the real world And stop my heart Beating for Oscar Comrade Levin, 
Good evening, officers. Why don't y'all come on in? It has come to our attention that you seem to have suddenly become politically unreliable, comrade. Is that so? Slightly mad, in fact. Do you really want to defame USSR? You, international face of Berbijan. Do you want to spend the rest of your life in Gulag? No, most certainly not. I'm far too soft and spoiled for that. Well, I wouldn't expect to be leaving Russia, comrade. That is out of question. Well, you can't blame a man for trying. I imagine, officer, you'd do the same in my shoes. I am not wearing shoes, comrade. I am wearing army boots. The very same boots I wore as I fought my way to the heart of Berlin, while you were safely here in Birobidshen. Well now, the shoe is on the other foot. As much fun as I'm having, gentlemen. Let's get down to business, because I have a deal for you. I am sure we will all delight in its whimsy. In the light of Russia's recent change of heart, regarding establishing a Jewish state in the land of Israel, I will allow you, in exchange for exit visas, for my family to stage my death. You can host a grand funeral, a possession, should you desire. I will leave the country with my children, and you will never hear of the Levin family or my dangerous opinions ever again. Also, you can grant permission to the Lieberman family to leave, if they wish. Well, that's a very interesting proposal, Comrade Levin. But if you think we can trust your word after what was reported to us by the very Comrade Lieberman you want to aid in leaving, then you are deluded. Here is what will actually happen. We will, and this is very difficult for us, so I want to stress that. Arrange for exit visas for your two children. They'll be on my desk tomorrow morning. Don't forget the Liebermans. Yes, very well. We will not, however, fake your death. You are to make yourself scarce, Mr. Levin. Very scarce. I think you understand what I am saying. Can we at least trust you to do that, comrade? Because rest assured, Oscar, if we cannot trust you to do it your way, the outcome will either way be the same, and your family will remain right here in Birobidjan, or worse. Good day, comrade. And so I'm left with little choice. I have no one I can turn to And so by fire I shall be tried I pray my sacrifice Is for the greater good I tell myself I have the best interest at heart I'll try in the meantime not to fall apart. For the sake of my family, I'll don a brave face, swallow the memory stuck in my throat. By the time that you receive this, if it gets to you at all, I can't stay silent in good conscience with so much needing to be said. The world's now your oyster to a certain extent. I suppose you need to thank for that. David, Bela, I have a wonderful surprise for you. At the office of the State Resettlement Committee, you will find exit visas for you both, and also for Sophia and her parents. You must collect these immediately and leave straight away. Don't ask any questions. Take with you what you need to get to Tel Aviv as soon as you can. Register your arrival with the authorities so I can find you. You may use all the money I've hidden in the house. You know where it is. I've had to leave urgently on party business, but I will join you there. Please don't worry. 
I love and I always want what's best for you. I know we'll meet again soon, at which point we live in peace. Please keep me in your prayers, and make sure to keep me there. On second thoughts, you can just come with us. Let's get this over and done. You've had plenty of time to make your peace. There's no point throwing it out. I... At this point, you've really no choice in matter, beyond dignity or no dignity. So you had better come with us. No, thank you. I'd sooner choose the dignified option. Comrade! Judeo-socialist utopia was a lovely idea. I wish I not better. And so I'm left without a choice. I pray my life's not in vain. The train station. Scattered people swaddled against the cold have turned out to give their farewells to the Levin and Lieberman families. Morel, you don't look happy at all. I would have thought you would have been delighted to leave. I'm truly happy, I really am. It's just it came out of the blue. I haven't had much time to say goodbye, which I'd have liked to do. I'm truly happy, but between just you and me Someone worked hard to pull strings That comes with sacrifice It was always a leap of faith Pledging our lives to this experiment Who knew what to expect Or when to give a hope This time we're good on our side This is more than an experiment this time we fulfill an ancient prophecy From the tundra back to the desert Out of the frying pan into the fire This time we can't fail With the Almighty on our side What's the point in smiling for the camera? So that when we look back we can convince ourselves of just how happy we were. Say goodbye to this fetid town, I should doubt we will ever return. One look at the broken dream and don't ever look back.